Good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Saturday the 3rd of September. Lesser festival for Gregory the Great and otherwise evening prayer on Saturday from the Church of England's Common Worship. You'll find the words towards the beginning of the book, Daily Prayer, Common Worship, in the section called Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Time, Evening Prayer on Saturday. Also, if you are following in the book, you might like to look up the 3rd of September and discover Gregory the Great and the options that we might be referring to in relation to him as we make our way. If you're electronically inclined, you may download apps for Apple or Android devices, read the words at Aremus Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website. You may join us by Zoom, the code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. I'm live streaming on Facebook and recording the audio to upload onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently, and I'm in the building 8 and 6 most days. You're welcome to join me here. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, <clears throat> to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. You will find a psalter at the back of the book. The psalm appointed this evening is number 104. I'll read it straight through. You're welcome to read it all, listen to it all, read the even numbered verses, and we'll pause to use the prayer that follows as we see fit. Psalm 104. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. You spread out the heavens like a curtain, and lay the beams of your dwelling place in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, and flames of fire your servants. You laid the foundations of the earth, that it never should move at any time. <clears throat> you covered it with the deep like a garment, the waters stood high above the hills. At your rebuke they fled, at the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They rose up to the hills and flowed down to the valleys beneath, to the place which you had appointed for them. You have set them their bounds that they should not pass, nor turn again to cover the earth. You send the springs into the brooks, which run along among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, and the wild asses quench their thirst. Beside them the birds of the air make their nests, and sing among the branches. You water the hills from your dwelling on high. The earth is filled with the fruit of your works. You make grass grow to grow for the cattle, and plants to meet our needs, bringing forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden our hearts. Oil to give us a cheerful countenance, and bread to strengthen our hearts. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, in which the birds build their nests, while the fir trees are a dwelling for the stork. 
The mountains are a refuge for the wild goats, and the stony cliffs for the conies. You appointed the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night, in which, each of the, in which all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The lions roar for their prey, <clears throat> and seek their food from God. The sun rises, and they are gone, to lay themselves down in their dens. People go forth to their work, and to their labour until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond number, both small and great. There go the ships, and there is that of Leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give it them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure for ever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him, while I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth, and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, a song of God's love, turning back into, uh, in the book to evening prayer on Saturday in ordinary time. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Before we get to our first reading from the Bible, this is a reading actually from a sermon or homily of Gregory the Great, whom we remember today, translated into modern English. The prophet Ezekiel, whom the Lord sent to preach his word, is described as a watchman or sentinel uh, to be gender free. A watchman always selects a high vantage point in order to be able to observe things better. In the same way, whoever is appointed watchman to a people should live on the heights so that he can help his people by having a broad perspective. I find it hard to make such a statement because such words are a reproach to myself. My preaching is mediocre and my life does not cohere with the values I preach so inadequately. I do not deny that I am guilty, for I recognise in myself lethargy and negligence. Perhaps my very awareness of my failings will gain me pardon from a sympathetic judge. When I lived in a monastic community, I could keep my tongue from idle chatter and devote my mind almost continually to the discipline of prayer. However, since assuming a burden of pastoral care, I find it difficult to keep steadfastly recollected because my mind is distracted by numerous responsibilities. I am required to deal with matters affecting churches and monasteries, and often I must judge the lives and actions of individuals. One moment I am required to participate in civil life, and the next moment to worry over the incursions of barbarians. I fear these wolves who menace the flock entrusted to my care. At another time I have to exercise political responsibility in order to give support to those who uphold the rule of law. I have to cope with the wickedness of criminals, and the next I am asked to confront them, but yet in all charity. My mind is in chaos fragmented by the many and serious matters I am required to give attention to. When I try to concentrate and focus my intellectual resources for preaching, how can I do justice to the sacred ministry of the word? I am often compelled by virtue of my office to socialise with people of the world, and sometimes I have to re relax the discipline of my speech. I realise that if I were to maintain the inflexible pattern of conversation that my conscience dictates, Certain weak individuals would simply shun my company, with the result that I would never be able to attract them to the goal I desire for them. So inevitably I find myself listening to their mindless chatter. Because I am weak myself, I find myself gradually being sucked into their idle talk, and saying the very things that I recoiled from listening to you before. 
I enjoy lying back where beforehand I was conscious lest I fall myself. Who am I? What kind of watchman am I? I do not stand on the pinnacle of achievement. I languish in the pit of my frailty. And yet, although I am unworthy, the creator and redeemer of us all has given me the grace to see life whole and an ability to speak effectively of it. It is for the love of God that I do not spare myself preaching him. <clears throat> Thank God for that humble honesty and self-awareness. May Gregory pray for us. To Micah 6 then, uh, chapter 6 of the book of Micah, in the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you've got a Holy Bible with its two covenants in front of you, if you open two-thirds of the way through and move back towards the beginning, you may be fortunate enough to find Micah falling open for you. Otherwise, do use an index, and uh, we will be reading the whole of chapter 5. That was rather the whole of chapter 6. That's uh, the number 6 in the uh, margin. Large number 6 is the chapter number. Micah, chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you, and what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I set before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, that Balaam, son of Peor, answered him. What happened from Shittim to Gilgal? that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. <clears throat> with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. The voice of the Lord cries to the city. It is the sound of wisdom to fear your name. Hear, O tribe and assembly of the city, can I forget the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? And can the scant measure that is accursed? Can I tolerate wicked scales, the bag of dishonest weights? Your wealth, you are full of violence, your inhabitants that speak lies, with tongues of deceit in their mouths. Therefore I have begun to strike you down, making you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat but not be satisfied, and there shall be a gnawing hunger within you. You shall put away but not save, and what you save I will hand over to the sword. You shall sow but not reap, you shall tread olives but not anoint yourselves with oil. You shall tread grapes but not drink wine. For you have kept the statutes of Omri and all the works of the house of Ahab, and you have followed their counsels. Therefore I will make you a desolation, and your inhabitants an object of hissing. So you shall bear the scorn of my people. <clears throat> so we've got uh, Micah arranging um, creation to hold God's people Israel to account. They're gathered round in the courtroom and then uh, God's voice from Micah is, I sent you Moses, Aaron, I brought you out of Egypt, I cared for you. Remember what Balaam and Balak, um, the story of Balaam and Balak, King Balak wanted Balaam to curse God's people and they didn't. What happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that was a clearing out, I think, ethnic cleansing to make room in the promised land for God's people. So this is God saying, this is what I've done for you. And uh, the response then comes arguably from God's people. Well, what shall I do? Shall I bring thousands of burnt offerings? And God says, do I need your sacrifices? No, what I want is simply justice, kindness and humility. And that is a lesson for all of us. We've just heard about Gregory having to be, have civic responsibilities, uh, justice responsibilities, religious responsibilities. And he expressed his, the justice, kindness and humility of God in what he said. However, Micah calls creation to um, be witness God sets out through Micah his, this is what I've done for you. Do you need to respond with sacrifices? No, just with kindness, humility and justice. But because God's people aren't even prepared to do that, God says, well, I can't tolerate wicked scales and dishonest weights. You're wealthy, you're violent, they lie. That's why I'm going to strike you down. That's why um, you shall plant crops but not harvest them. In this case, because they're going to go into exile. So an army is going to come and take their crops. And this is deemed to be a punishment for God's people for not living right with God. And uh, in our own day, because we have um, 
not lived in relation to the environment as we should have and fill the atmosphere with carbon dioxide more than it was uh, designed to bear. It's become like a greenhouse, trapping that heat, insulating more than it should. And so in this part of England, at least in East Anglia, we haven't had decent rain since the end of last year. And so we're not going to be able to plant the crops now for winter. We're using winter feed for our livestock now. And so there will be a shortage um, in the new year. And arguably it's because we haven't dealt with creation as we should have, as God gave us jurisdiction and stewardship, yet we have uh, not fulfilled the requirements placed upon us, the responsibilities. To Mark 6 from 30 then, our second reading, scrolling on online to Mark 6 from 30. If you are following in a Bible, Mark is the second of the Gospels, opening the second covenant, Matthew, Mark, about two-thirds of the way through. Uh, do you use an index if it doesn't fall open? We're looking for the large number 6, chapter 6 again, this time small numbers in the text of verses 30 to 44. Mark 6 from 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And then, and they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them. They hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. They said to him, I was going to buy 200 narai worth of bread and give it to them to eat. And he said to them, how many loaves have you? And go and see. And they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He divided the two fish among them all, and all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish, which he had eaten the no loaves, numbered five thousand men. The feeding of the five thousand story. People are following Jesus, listening to him, get carried away, too many people to feed. <clears throat> disciples suggest Jesus sends them away, he suggests the disciples they feed them. And uh, he gives thanks for some of the stuff that they find by way of food amongst the people gathered <clears throat> and starts to dish it out. <clears throat> Whether we believe that these five loaves and two fish broken again and again actually fed everyone, or whether as people were sitting down they realised that actually they were okay, it was okay to share their food, and so the food came from amongst the people that were there. Um, who knows? But one way or another... The miracle was that some people who were going to go hungry were now going to be fed. And the disciples recognised that God's provision was available. Jesus gave thanks to God. And as people turned to God, the provision was there rather than just holding on to their own and not even daring to open their sandwich boxes in case anybody sitting next to them realised that they had a dairy lee or whatever it might be that they didn't want the other people next to them to see and to ask for. There are numbers here. We've got five loaves and two fish. Is that the law? Is that law and the prophets? 5,000 men, lots of fives there and a two. We can play with those numbers as we will. Does this refer to the Holy Communion and God's feeding of us in word and sacrament? Again, I think it applies to that as much as to anything else. And we can hold, to my mind, weave all those things together. And this is a miraculous story of God's provision, not just of food, but of teaching, of how to live, and a working out of that in practice. To the responsory back in evening prayer on Saturday in ordinary time. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. The Song of Mary, the opening and closing refrains, I think you might need to look up if you are following in the book, otherwise it's provided for you, beginning with those who, common of teachers perhaps, otherwise my sorrow proclaims will be the same for us uh, for the rest of the canticle.
however we are following. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. In this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. <clears throat> he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. <clears throat> Source of rest, air of peace, comforter, advocate, three in one, one in three. We look back over this day at those moments where we have rested, where we have known your provision and your protection, where we have felt safe, cared for. We thank you for those experiences. We also recognise there have been moments in the day where we have felt exposed, vulnerable, broken, hurt, in need. And so we come to you at the end of the day to ask you to restore that peace, that presence, that protection for us as we head into next week from tomorrow. Release International. No feed scheduled, it says. They're usually quite, uh, quite good. Apologies for that. <coughs> I'm just turning up the Christian Aid uh, website for its entry for today. Waiting for it to open. Which is, I'm not sure why that's uh, playing up to you. And using another link, 3rd of September, Christian Aid Ireland. We pray for good spirits and energy for all the walkers taking part in the Sheep's Head hike today. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine. And as we pray this for that nation, we extend our prayers to cover all those who suffer military violence. God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and, peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty of conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. Hear our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failures be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. Suffolk Diocese prayers. We pray for St. Bartholomew Ipswich and their minister, Paul. We pray for their uh, um, permission to officiate House for Duty clergy, their readers, their elders, their church and treasurer and secretaries, people on the PCC, electoral roll, congregations and community. May they all uh, be involved in that great conversation of love in that place. We pray for our MPs and local government, all elected into uh, office to make decisions on behalf of others. May they love mercy, do justice and walk humbly with our God. We pray too for Jothamu, who is Rural Dean of Murukulazo Deanery in the Kagera Diocese. May he be inspired as Micah to speak truth to power and sustain his people as Gregory did by word and example. 
Ordinarily, we pray for places as we work our way through the week. But on Saturdays, having prayed for our ministers this morning, we pray for those on our team council this afternoon. We pray for Philip, the tower captain, rep, Jason, team organist, Karen, team choir director, Carolyn Clark, team administrator, Pedro, team treasurer, Jeffrey, lay chair. We thank God for all of these and their personalities, their faith, where they have that, their commitment, their support of the faith, even if they may not have it themselves, for their professionalism, and their love, and all that is good about all of them in their contributions to the rich and varied tapestry of life that is the Blythe Churches. And uh, we ask a blessing on Peter, Liz, Ron, and Jean, Emily, Sam, others we may know of, for whom life at the moment is difficult, perhaps include that in that with Jamie, and the people recovering from uh, operations. We pray that you will make a way where there is no way, and to act in sovereign grace in each of these circumstances. We thank you too for all that's good in the lives of Ruth, Alan, Marjorie, Barbara, Gerald, Albert, Doris, Charles, David, Joy, Hurt and Mary, Ron, Jean and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident and those that have taken their own lives. We pray for those we've known and loved and see no longer, those who have served you faithfully in this place. And as we remember Gregory, all whose years mine fought at this time. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances, that we will hear your incarnate mouth speaking your inspired word by the breath of your spirit that brings light in our darkness, order in our chaos and fruitfulness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Namahamapalyana <laughs> Merciful Father, who chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God, grant that, like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming your gospel to the nations and may ever rejoice to sing your praises through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.